Drawing solid three is a little bit different from the previous two, whereas we're actually going to be using some dimensions this time instead of just a uh, graph paper that shows um, sizes. So the difference is down here. It says create the following object using the dimensions that are given. When done, create the part. Uh, place, uh, please place the front, top, right side view and the isometric views onto a piece of paper for submission. Please insert the hidden lines and center lines where applicable and use the A4 landscape title block. So let's take a look at the assignment that we're going to work on. Uh, looks like this. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the circle here and create this back plate. And then on the back plate, I will create this front rectangle that protrudes off of it. And then I'll cut this out and I'll cut the circle out. So I'm going to create this back plate first. And that means I'm going to be using the front view to start. And then, yeah, and then we'll, we'll draw this piece that, that extrudes out the front of the, of the piece. Okay. So it looks like the, the overall size of this is a five eighths radius, which would make it a one and one fourth diameter. So if it asks us for a radius, that's five eighths. If it asks us for a diameter, we just have to double that. So that would be 10 eighths, which is one and two eighths or one and one fourth for our diameter. Um, the total length here is two and one eighth for our total length. Um, our total height, see the thickness of this is a half an inch. And then from here to the to here is a half an inch. So from the center of the circle down to the bottom is one inch. So it'd be one and five eighths total for the total height. And the width of this thing, it looks like the width is a half an inch plus three fourths of an inch. So that'd be one and a quarter. Uh, in depth. Okay, so using that information, um, we're going to go ahead and draw this back plate to start. So let me get a solid works. I am going to create a new part. And I'm going to start on the front view and go normal to and I am going to start with um, the sketch of a circle. I'm going to start with that circle and I'm going to click right on the origin, making the center of my circle equal to the origin. And I'm just going to pull, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm just going to pull out a circle and I'm going to continue the sketch with just the line. So for this one, I want the line to be right at the quadrant point here. And notice it gives me the four quadrant points in yellow. So I'm going to make sure I attach to the right quadrant point. Um, and it turns orange when I do that. And I'm just going to go straight down. And I'm going to go down. Let's see, the total um, is right around one inch. And then I'm going to go over. Actually, you know what? Let me let me redo. Just to make this a little closer to reality, let me go with a um, a radius of somewhere near five eighths. So 0.625 is five eighths. So let me start like that. Then when I draw these lines, I can get fairly close. So I can go down one inch now, approximately one inch, over just over two inches. Um, I'm going to go up 0.75-ish, and then I'm going to go up to my circle. Now, when I, when I click on the circle, I want to make sure that I'm either down here somewhere or up here somewhere. I don't want to connect to my quadrant. Not there, not up there. Um, notice when I get somewhere in here, right there, it gives me the midpoint of this 
down, I don't want to be equal to that because as soon as I do that, it's going to give me, uh, it's going to lock me in at that location. Well, I want this line to be tangent. So I'm going to, I'm just going to attach it to the side first like that. Hit escape. So I break off my line. Then I'm going to hold down my control key on my keyboard. So the control key and I'm going to select these two items, this item and this item. And I have to hold the control key down in order to do that. So I'm going to say that these two items, and I'm going to click right here, I want those two lines to be tangent. And now notice, watch what happens when I click on tangent, it slides it up to a tangent location. All right, so I've, I've set, set a, um, uh, my properties, my constraints, I've set that this line is now tangent to this arc. So I've set a constraint. Um, equal to that. And I just check mark in my properties that I've, I've done that. Um, so now I'm going to dimension this thing. So smart dimension. Um, I want the diameter of this to be 1.25. I want the height of this to be one inch. The length of this to be um, 2.125 of this to be 0.75 and notice everything turned black because it's fully defined it's no longer blue and so I'm done with the dimension and but I still need to trim off the bottom of this so I'm going to click on trim and I'm just trim to closest is what I want and I'm just going to click on the bottom edge of that trim that off okay good uh, let me exit the sketch um, let me spin this a little bit sideways. I'm going to highlight the sketch right here and go to feature and say that I want to extrude boss at a depth of 0.5. So I change my, my depth to 0.5, check mark, and there's my point. Oops, check mark. There's my, my piece. Now I'm going to bring that, that, um, that piece off the front of this. So I'm going to select this as my side normal to. I'm going to create a sketch of a rectangle. I'm going to start right down at the corner. Make sure you get the orange dot. And if I go over to this side, um, I've got two options here. I know that the thickness of my material is a half an inch. And I also know that this line here from here to here is one inch. So if I go to the midpoint, you see that little orange dot right there that pops up when I get to the midpoint? It gives me a little midpoint. If I go to that midpoint, I don't have to put in a dimension because I know that it's, half, it's a half an inch from the bottom to the midpoint of this line, okay? So if I click on there, it locks me in at a half an inch. My rectangle is done and watch this. When I go to try to dimension this, if I try to dimension this, it's going to say, whoa, 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 you're making a dimension. Do you want to, do you want this to overdrive the fact that you've already set it at the midpoint, which is equal to a half an inch? So I'm going to cancel out of that. I don't want to do that. Um, so I, I want to leave it just like it is. So let me spin this sideways. Okay, so let me exit the sketch and highlight the sketch and say that I want to extrude and I want this to, um, extrude out 0.75. So I'm going to change this measurement to 0.75 and check mark. Oops, so there's that, that base. Uh, let me drill the hole in the face of this. So let me normal to and sketch of a circle. Remember that our origin is right at the center point of the circle. So that's good. And if it doesn't look like it's centered to you with the same, just move your mouse up and see if it's the same center point. Yep, it sure is. So this is going to be a diameter of a half an inch. Uh, so let me just put it in like that, dimension it. It's a diameter of 0.5. And I'm done with that. I can exit the sketch, highlight where it says sketch there, feature. This is a cut and it's going to be through all. Check mark. And there's our hole through that. 
And next we have a rectangular hole that we have to put right on this. So I'm going to click on here, go normal to, and I'm going to create a sketch rectangle. And just make sure you start it on this bottom line somewhere. And let's dimension it. I know that from the edge here to the edge here, and again, I just single clicked on both of those. This has got to be a half an inch. And I know that the size of the rectangle is 5 eighths. So if you don't know the decimal equivalent, you can actually put in the fraction 5 dash 8, enter, and it says it's 0 0.63, which is actually 0 0.625. Um, and now I need to know how deep this thing is. So I need to say that the depth here is 3 eighths. So 3 dash 8. And it's all good. Spin it sideways. Um, I'm done with the dimension. I exit the sketch, highlight the sketch, go to feature, and I want to cut. And I want to cut through all. So there is our object. And let's save this. Save as. This is solid three. And click on new drawing browse. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to the A4 landscape. Okay. Solid three is here. Double click. Start with the front view, top view, side view, isometric view. Check mark. Highlight this view. Say I don't want the uh, the hidden lines, um, but make sure that you keep your hidden lines in these. Okay. Now it already gave me my hidden lines in these. If yours did not, you simply sync, click on the front view here, and go to right over here where it says hidden lines visible. That's what we want. We want the hidden lines in the front, top, and right side view to be visible. Um, so now I'm going to put in my center lines. So I'm going to go to the annotate tab and I'm going to go to center line. Actually, I'm going to go to center mark first and I'm going to click on this big outside arc and it's going to give me the center lines for both this circle and for the outside arc. Hit escape just so you can see what it looks like. Good. Then I'm going to go center line and I'm going to click on this line and this line that shows that hole going through there. And I also need to show the hole going through here. When I click on these two lines, however, it puts that center line directly over top of the, the tangent point there, which comes out as a single line. So Technically speaking, we wouldn't need to put that center line in because it runs in the same location as that line right there. So technically we wouldn't have to put that in. Okay. So there is all of our center lines, center line, center line, center line. We have our hidden lines. And let me just move this back a little bit. I think I'm done with center line. Let me move this back a little bit. All right, to fill out the title block, right mouse click, edit sheet format, put in your name. Come up here, right mouse click, edit sheet. And you are ready to submit. You can do a save as and save it as a PDF and you can submit that PDF as you're drawing. Hopefully that was helpful.